Hey guys, this is Neil, your Pinoy Plantito, and welcome to my channel. So today uh, we will have a quick quick session still on a review so uh, I get a little bit bored with what I'm doing so I decided hey let's make a vlog. <laughs> so I don't have uh, something to make over today and I don't have a uh, time for that but on a weekend we will have a patio makeover so watch out for that. So today this is one of those episodes where we will do plant care tips and techniques and Today our topic is about something that is commonly asked of me every time I get into an interview uh, on a radio or in some publication. And this is all about the mystery of the green thumb. People ask me, do you believe in green thumb or do you have a green thumb? And what is your opinion about this? And uh, today I will be talking, we will untangle about the green thumb mystery. I'll be sharing to you also some tips on how you can develop the green thumb within yourselves if there is such a thing. All right. So number one about a green thumb. Is there really such a thing as having a green thumb? Is it really something like a magic? Is it something like a, like a gift that is given to only a few people? And so those who don't have it will have to struggle all their lives when it comes to plants? Is it really something like that? Well, I hate to break it to you, but I honestly, and it is my personal opinion, that green thumb is a myth. A lot of people has been telling me, oh, you have a green thumb. And that's for a reason. I got into ornamentals second quarter last year, 2020, at the height of the pandemic. And prior to that, I have very little experience when it comes to ornamental although i came from a family of farmers and we've been planting crops for years and years but this is different thing ornamentals are a completely different thing from from crops and uh so when i started uh, around april or may 2020 i have less experience about plant but by the end of that year, I, I became a daddy to over a thousand individual number of ornamental belonging to more than 500 species slash genera slash cultivar slash varieties. And in all those months, I can count in my five fingers all the plants that I killed in the process, which is... Um, Modesty aside, I think it's a very, very good track record for a beginner. And so many people would consider me to, to be that person with the green thumb. But I consider myself more as lucky rather than, rather than um, with some magical green thumb powers. You know why? Because when I was starting, I didn't have a budget for expensive plants. I had no choice so I, I just planted common plants and those plants that, that can be found around. So, But if I have the money probably I, the first plants that I would probably get into would be the expensive plants that are actually are easy to kill you know. <laughs> so the good thing is I didn't have budget for that so I started with common plants and because of this I have a very good success rate. So that's, that's basically my story. So do I believe in the green thumb? No, I don't believe in the green thumb. I believe it's a science and I believe that anyone can be someone who can develop a love for plants and in the same way, plants would love them also. Now that we know that having a green thumb is not really a magical thing it's not really just a gift <laughs> that doesn't make you like a superhero to have a green thumb it's given we in each of us we have this capacity to take care and propagate 
and multiply the plants, every one of us. So now that we have changed our mindset about the green thumb myth, it's a good development because now that we, we admit to ourselves that it is not just a privilege for some people, but everyone has the capacity to have a green thumb. Now we can start working on how to develop your having a green thumb. Number two point is this. Developing your green thumb is not a matter of this, but this. Okay, it's not a matter of your hands. It's a matter of how green you think. So think green. You have to be green minded guys. And not in the kind of way that you think, okay? <laughs> so you have to be green minded, which is all about learning, being uh, being open with the idea of learning about plants. How we can develop it, you have to research, you have to study your plant, you have to take notes, you have to pay attention, you have to watch YouTube like this, you have to watch Plantito, and just have an open mind uh, to learn about about plants. You have to be really, really interested with plants in order for you to have a green thumb. All right. Number three, you start small. Start small, guys. Don't aim for for those really um, expensive plants that are hard to come by and hard to propagate as well. You know, there's a reason why some plants are rare. Because they are rare because it is so hard to propagate them. Like some plants need needed to be pollinated you know like you think if they can easily be propagated they will not be out in the market of course they will but they're not and not just because some people theorize that they are being controlled no it's really hard to propagate them yes yeah, start small and develop confidence that's that's my story actually guys i started small i started with common plants and um because of that I developed, I gained confidence when it comes to propagation, taking care of plants, and it builds your confidence also when you have a higher success rate when you're starting. Rather than when, rather than you know having a lot of failures, that's gonna keep you like very unmotivated, like you don't want to go anymore, like you think you have a brown thumb or something like that. Okay, if you're a beginner, guys, I would like to give my suggestion for the top three plants that is best for you. These plants are very easy to grow. They are easy to take care of. Actually, you can just neglect them. And most importantly, they're hard to kill, guys. So here's one of my favorite plants. It's a Syngonium. Syngoniums are really very easy to grow plants and they're fast growers and they can tolerate medium to bright lights so it's really nice syngonium and aglonemas aglonemas have colorful foliage and they are also one of my most neglected plants but somehow they manage to impress me all the time with their growth and amazing amazing foliage really and another one is this the potos Pothos are amazing, fast grower, easy to grow, easy to care for, and hard to kill. Yeah. So those guys are the top three plants that I would recommend for a beginner. And I can absolutely guarantee you that you could never go wrong with these plants and you will have a high success rate. Now from the top three easiest plants to take care of and to grow let's go to the top three plants that I wouldn't recommend you to as a beginner to venture into um, I would say that don't mess with it plants just yet unless you have a good um, you can back it up with a good research and consultation with your expert friends probably then you might be successful in growing this type of plants but for me as a beginner i would not recommend you getting into first calatheas calatheas are 
are absolutely fussy plants and uh, very, very temperamental. And aside from that, they hate uh, they hate to be in direct sunlight. They hate to be in very shady places. They tend to be over dramatic with watering. And second are anthuriums. Anthuriums are their leaves get easily damaged with the changing atmospheric conditions like temperature, rising and drop of temperature and lighting. So don't mess with anthuriums just yet. And lastly, monsteras. Monsteras are easy to grow and and easy to take care of once once they have jump start their growth. So it's okay. But because they're not easy to propagate, it's so hard to propagate them. And you gotta have a special soil mix for that. So you have to learn first about soil mix and uh, and propagating them properly. They are prone, very prone to root rot, so um, not really ideal for beginners. And aside from that, they are also kind of pricey, so if you don't know how to take care of them, you might as well just end up killing them. So guys, we go to tip number four. Make it easy for you. How do we make things easier for us as a, as a gardener? Well, it's actually really easy for beginners to choose the plants. Like what I did, I chose the plants that, that are readily found available. So those are endemic plants. They're the best plants to grow for beginners because they can be found in your locality. Aside from the fact that they are readily available, you have the perfect atmosphere, you have the perfect environment, you have the you have the perfect soil and whatever conditions that they need it's very telling that these plants will thrive with you in your backyard the, there must be a reason the condition in your area must be perfect for these plants for them to thrive there for millions of mil in millions of years another tip that i can give you guys is to select plants that are similar to each other if not the same variety but if you can but if you can have plants of the same variety only it's better now if you opt to grow plants that are not similar to each other you better have some section of your garden and you group them together which is a good thing I also do that I have like a begonia corner I have a syngonium corner aglonema corner the reason for the grouping is because I want to make it easy for myself. Like, when I water them, I know that all these plants need to be watered the same, same time, same, at the same rate, at the same amount. Because if, imagine if you have, uh, for example, a caladium, which is, which is a very demanding plant when it comes to watering, and then you will place your cactus near the caladium what will happen <laughs> it's so hard to water them together because you will you have to be very very careful that you put a lot of water in one pot and then try not to water the other pot because it hates water it can be killed by over watering so that's the reason why you group plants together so you can you can like um, like when I when I water, I just water these plants, like spray them with a spray hose. That's it, because I know that these plants should be watered at this frequency. You know, this plant needs to be watered two to three times a week. This one needs to be watered every 14 days only. So when you group the plants together, the same varieties, the same temperament, you make your life easier, and you are preparing yourself for great success. And lastly guys, don't give up. Maybe you started gardening with your wrong food. Maybe you haven't watched Plantito said these things. But um, now that we're learning together, it's really nice because um, we're gearing ourselves to be more successful in what we do. I hope that you will be this person who after this pandemic realizes 
his genuine love for plants and not just someone who jumped into the bandwagon into the frenzy and i hope that after this pandemic your plants will still have someone to call mommy or daddy all right so uh i hope you learned something guys in this small talk with you i hope to talk with you soon and let's have some meaningful conversation about the things that interest us so i'll see you again Bye-bye.